Ultimately, a carrier's capabilities rest on its aircraft, and no other ship can carry as many as the 80-plus planes and helicopters on a Nimitz or Ford. The Queen Elizabeth class has a typical air group of around 40, including a maximum 36 F-35s, which is convenient because at the moment that's every single F-35 in the Royal Navy and Royal Air Force. And the ships don't have catapults, so they can only operate the F-35B, which has a shorter range than the C variant on American carriers. Now, the ships were designed and built for but not with catapults, so in theory they could be added in future. Yeah, it's cost cutting because being British, what can I say, we're poor now. But you know, I think the Queen Elizabeth qualifies as a super carrier. I mean, they're significantly larger and more capable than anything previously operated by the Royal Navy and really more than any other carrier outside the US. Integrated electric propulsion though, not nuclear. But if a true super carrier has to be nuclear powered, there's the French planned future carrier, which is also planned to have an electromagnetic aircraft launch system. But I mean, if any European country officially has a supercarrier. The US would probably go out of its way to invent a hypercarrier or ultra carrier. Or you know, maybe just finally get around to building an actual heli carrier. Follow for more.